hey, what's up? Um, cheers. I was thinking we should talk about Bronwell because we haven't talked about Bronwell and it's a bit into the week, but I've been sick all week, so there's not much I could have done uh, to help you out there. But if you're somebody who has been sitting on their vis and is like, I don't know what to do about Bronwell, um, here we are to answer that. So, uh, cheers. Happy to be here. I am drinking uh, a very um, sensible bourbon um, weller and um, it's, yeah, super sensible and I feel like this is perfect for Bronwell. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so we will get into this, I guess, by maybe me having to tell a story, which I, I promised relates. I really do feel like it relates, so don't worry about that. Uh, anyhow, I guess I would like to post, post, um, um, posit, uh, uh, propose, um, a situation for y'all to weigh in on and maybe have a, an opinion. Uh, so, uh, imagine you had a house full of, of hungry mouths and some of them were children and those children were like super excited about making brownies. I was like, okay, let's make brownies. That sounds great. And so you do that, you get those brownies in the oven, and then you go on to make the main course, which also requires flour, because it's like a little steaky thing, a little bit of gravy, you know, all that. And as you're putting the flour in for that, you realize, oh my gosh, there are actual bugs in this flour. Um, I might try to show you a video of this. I don't know if it'll come through. I'm going to try it. Point being, um, like that's a significant amount of bugs, right? Right. And so as you're as you're going to do this like main dish thing, you know, you're thinking, okay, well, I can dump this out and just do the main dish a different way, but what do I do about the brownies? And that was the big question. Because you have all these all these children who are just like, you know, stars in their eyes waiting for these delicious brownies. They will never know if there's bugs cooked into them. They'll never know if um, uh, they're eating something that is like, you know, a, a full of extra protein. And also, I, I think, I think we're supposed to be eating bugs because I think that's supposed to be like the, the, the global um, shift to do. Uh -huh. um, I, uh, ah, you know how I feel about bugs, right? Yeah. Not, we're not, we don't, we don't get along very well. But anyhow. Um, I am trying to be open-minded and so I think, you know, should I, should I be the one that calls the shots and be like, no, nobody's eating these and dump them out or, or should I serve them or should I, um, postpone dinner by going back to the store and rebuying the ingredients that I need to make a new batch. Ooh. Ethical decisions, moral questions. Um, so please weigh in and let me know what you would do in this situation. I went back and I asked my mom what she would do the situation. I absolutely knew 100% what she was going to say, which was no, like she would either not, you know, she would dump them out and tell us like, sorry, no brownies tonight, um, or go to the store and get their ingredients. She was like, no, I would serve them if nobody would know. And I was like, damn. Uh, yes, yeah, so I got that wrong. But um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, don't imagine you have these all these all these people waiting on you for dessert and food what do you do but um yeah no it was too much for me i couldn't do it i have a thing with bugs i've always had a thing with bugs i also have a thing with bugs that crawl well all the bugs all the bugs um anyway so um what we need to talk about is bronwell and the reason why this connects is because bronwell looks like somebody who would not serve bugs um, to other people. She looks like somebody, like, like if she baked brownies for the orphanage, which, I mean, she's a missionary, so that's probably in her MO at some point. Well, she, she's not feeding the bugs. She wouldn't do that. That's not a Bronwell thing to do. So, um, that's why this story was relevant and why you had to sit through it. Um, now that you sat through it, if you have, and if you didn't, that's fine too. Let's go look at... Ronwell and figure out what's going on with her because I've got a lot of comments on her 
um, in general, just of my own, but I would like to maybe see if, um, before I make my comments, we can learn a little bit about her, um, more than we already know that could, um, change my mind. I'm not sure it will, but we will see. Um, anyhow, so Bronwell, she's the purging, purging, purging missionary, Bronwell. Uh, a missionary born in the holy land of Tessera, far to the south of Ardra. Alongside her fellow sister, Shelva, she crossed the ocean not only to spread the crystal faith, but to investigate the disappearance of Sadly and Exia, whose fates had since been unknown after they ventured to Ardra themselves long ago. Um, okay, so my so her limit versus crystal judgment uh, bestows um defensing defense piercing rate for three turns upon self while dealing large damage to targets so aoe within range and lowers defense piercing rate and spirit piercing rate for three turns on those units um it looks a little bit like this so enjoy all that holy magic um so Hmm. 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 Um, my main question is, well, okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at her things real quick. Um, her, her, her main class is a great knight, Vanguard striking class, a highly durable job that can reduce incoming damage, bestow AP restore rem removal to allies and more. Uh, next job, Paladin, Vanguard Physical Striking pal uh, Class, a job that specializes in events and can protect allies by drawing enemy attacks. And then lastly, Vanguard Striking Class, Dragoon, a spear-wielding job that compounds on two panel-piercing attacks with a jump skill. The Dragon's Blade Reaction Ability further enhances fighting sustainability. Her TMR will be Ecclesia Amulet. Which is an accessory, gives you a little HP stat, some defense, a critical evade, and luck. Ooh, a nice luck stat for sure. Um, this is an ornate necklace worn by Bronwall, a missionary from the Crystal Sanctum, who sailed from Tessera to Ardra across the Southern Seas. It was presented to her by the Supreme Pontiff when she first left on her mission, and is a badge of her status as a superior clergywoman. It was fashioned to replace the Divine Soul, an ancient and uh, sacred item inscribed with the prayers of generations of its owners, which went missing along with a legendary missionary, Sadly. Oh, so they're looking for that. The current Supreme Pontiff ordered the creation of this new amulet and inscribed it himself with its first prayers. Few believed that the protective blessing it confers could match that of its ancient predecessor. But Brahma placed it around her neck with pride before setting sail for the land she had never seen. All right, um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on with 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 this, and um, maybe we could three D her. Yeah, we'll three D you up, uh, Brahma, right now because I want to talk about something. And you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about your big sword. Because, here's the thing, if you, and she keeps talking about how she's a missionary, who's just here to, like, be a missionary, maybe an investigative missionary, which, like, is a kind of like a, a, like, a secret subclass of missionary, but I also think that it's still a pacifistic, um, missionary class, but here she is with her big sword. Bronwell, why are you carrying around a big sword if your entire... Um, M.O. is to, like, only whip out that sword to protect others. Like, you keep talking about, like, oh, no, it's just here for protection, but, like, why are you carrying that thing around? You know? And, like, oh, I'm not killing people. I'm just knocking them out. You don't have to knock them out with a big sword. How do you even knock people out with a big sword? Uh, so, I've got some questions about Bronwell, and I feel like, um, her big sword's not really up to answering them. So, we're gonna have to see what else, um, what else she's got up her pocket. And it looks, even just by this picture, that she's got, like, a little fanny pack there. And, like, what's up in that? And it's a little booklet or what? What are those instructions? And, um, in our last story event, our story, story, story chapter, um, and, like, uh, spoilers if you, you're not caught up, 
but um yeah they they find exia and and they're like no like you know we, we just want to know what what's up and uh she's not down for um for all the things going on but she's like i i am here i am down to take down the realm scourge so we'll have to see um the role that uh, Bronwell wants to play, especially with Shelva. Shelva, Shelva, like makes more sense. Like she's like, I'm a missionary. I'm carrying around a dinky little whatever she's carrying around. That's dinky. Um, but Bronwell, I don't know why we got this. Why we got this big sword? It's um, it's highly suspicious. And uh, you know, I don't know who tipped her off on the fact that like she might need it, but. You don't carry around, around something of that bulk if you don't plan to use it, is all I'm saying. So, is she cool to pull? Well, she is a 70 cost dark big sword user. Big swords are all over the place, man. Like, you know, we've got Astrius and then A2's coming and uh, it's, all these crazy magic teams are, are really wreaking havoc and um, being tons of trouble. So, we gotta see well, what we can do to combat them. Um, I don't know what she's going to do to combat them, but maybe she would do something. Uh, she's got a big sword, anyhow. She's she's ready, not just to protect herself, apparently. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't trust it. So, um, what's going on with her? We still need to find out. But, um, is she cool to pull? Dude, I gotta say yes. Um, she's, like, sneaky cool. And the reason, yeah, the reason I'm drinking this bourbon is because I feel like if she's somebody who carries a, a big sword around casually when um, all she maybe needs to do is defend herself, this girl, yeah, she's definitely drinking bourbon. So, and, and yeah, sensible bourbon like Waller. Um, so that's my thoughts on her. And um, I, I would like to think that as the story progresses that we're going to see like some extra special um oomph from from her not I'm sure about Shelva but definitely from her um I think I think she has it and we're gonna have to see what what she's able to convince uh Exia to do because Exia yeah she might be like that that sneaky puzzle piece that um subtly could sneakily be able to redeem himself just in the standpoint, not from his actions necessarily, but by the fact that he put the pieces together and in motion to bring back Exia. And if Exia is the missing puzzle piece that helps him defeat the Realm Scourge, then that it kind of like in a, in a roundabout way um, redeems subtly. I don't know. Not redeems him. I, mean, I don't like him. Don't you, don't you dare think that. But these are kind of some story things that are mulling around in my mind. So we'll have to figure that out. So Bronwell, I feel like you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, um, serve a piece in this puzzle, be a piece in this puzzle. Um, uh, one of those things. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, the bourbon, but we shall see. Is she cool to pull? Yes, because I think she's got a lot, yeah, a lot up her sleeve besides a big sword, but that big sword is pretty cool. Okay, again, too much talking. We've, we've gone over time. There is no time limit, but in my mind, we've gone over time, and that's enough for me. So, um, cheers, and let's grab a screen and go get her a little bit more. Yes, Ronwell, you're cool to pull. Um, if you haven't done it and you're thinking about doing it and you're waiting for this, that's my advice. Um, but do what you want as always. And, um, yeah, come find us and hang out if you want to talk all about it. Uh, otherwise, uh, cheers. Oh, and also cheers if you do want to.